ओके सो वंस अगेन गुड मॉर्निंग एंड जय भीम एवरी वन आई आई एम जागेश सोमकुंवर आई एम जी एम प्रोडक्शन इन ओ एन जी सी एंड ऑल्सो चेयरमैन ऑफ ऑल इंडिया एस सी एस टी एम्प्लॉज वेलफेयर एसोसिएशन मुंबई ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ माई थीम आई वेलकम यू ऑल एंड to this very uh, very you know informative uh, session on foreign education how to how to prepare for uh, you know uh, for for uh, for you know writing exams or or, or many, there are there are many issues related to this uh, you know so so let us welcome with a round of applause today's our special guest ms srusti dhoke मिस सृष्टि ढोके एक बार जोरदार तालियां बजाइए स्वागत करिए मैडम का और और सृष्टि जी जो है वो आज हमको फॉरेन एडमिशन प्रिपरेशन एंड बियॉन्ड प्रिपरेशन भी कैसे करना है उसके बाद में और क्या क्या इश्यूज है उसके बारे में हम सबको हम सबको वो गाइड करने वाले हैं और और मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट चीज ये भी है कि क्योंकि इसमें बहुत से डिफरेंट डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया वेरी कॉर्नर ऑफ इंडिया लोग ज्वाइन हुए हैं तो हम सृष्टि जी को हम यहाँ निवेदन करना चाहेंगे कि थोड़ा हिंदी भी मिक्स थोड़ा सा जिस जितना आता है थोड़ा हिंदी भी करेंगे तो ठीक रहेगा या इट विल बी बोथ हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश हाँ तो ठीक है इंग्लिश मेन मेन रहेगा बाकी थोड़ा सा बीच में थोड़ा सा क्योंकि देर आर सम पीपल सो 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 वंस अगेन आई 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 वेलकम यू सृष्टि जी thank you so and, and uh, everybody to this program uh so uh, before uh, sushti ji uh, takes over uh, i'll introduce her first uska dekhiye unka sushti ji ka itna kam age mein itne bade bade achievements hai ki ye is really very encouraging to everybody all students those who are watching this program they must uh, they must uh, understand uh, they must uh, must uh, be serious about this kya 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 matlab सृष्टि जी ने इतने से एज में कितने कितने अच्छे अच्छे कारनामे किए हैं सो so, मैं उनका बायोडाटा जो है आप लोगों के सामने पढ़ूंगा आप लोग थोड़ा ध्यान से ध्यान से देखिए ध्यान से सुनिए ओके तो मिस सृष्टि डोके इज इन थर्ड ईयर स्टूडेंट एट बॉस्टन यूनिवर्सिटी यूएसए एंड परसुइंग हर बी इन इकोनॉमिक्स एंड मैथमेटिक्स she is a recipient of the presidential scholarship which is awarded to the top 3% students of the university she has been on the dean's merit list throughout her time in college while being at boston university she has been actively participating and heading a mentorship program called dream which aims to bridge the opportunity gap for children from low income families in boston and cambridge she is also an international peer mentor through the boston university global program and is responsible for guiding incoming international students and building community among international students she has also been a part of two interstate community service trips and has contributed to the student government as well वर्क एक्सपीरियंस के बारे में देखिए शी हैज वर्क एज अ मार्केटिंग एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंटर्न एट सेंटर फॉर करियर डेवलपमेंट एट बॉस्टन यूनिवर्सिटी शी हैज वर्क एज अ सोशल मीडिया मैनेजर एट गर्ल्स एक्सटेक एंड इमर्जिंग नॉन प्रॉफिट वेयर शी क्रिएटेड सोशल मीडिया कंटेंट एंड रोड ब्लॉग पोस्ट शी वॉज अ ट्यूटर एट पुलिस इंग्लिश डॉट कॉम एंड आई ई एल टी ट्रेनिंग सेंटर्स and has interned at the hindustan times head office in new delhi literature ke field mein dekhiye ye yeah, this is very important at the age of 18 only she she penned a very good novel tamarind act jo maine aapko usme likha hua hai so this is the book is available on amazon and all the websites those who are selling the books okay to और इसमें पूरा वो जो महाराष्ट्र का एक छोटा सा विलेज है जो सृष्टि का जो सृष्टि का नागपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट में सृष्टि का जो विलेज है मतलब पेरेंटल जो 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 विलेज है वहाँ की स्टोरीज है जो ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स ने सृष्टि को जो शेयर किया था वो सृष्टि ने उसको बहुत अच्छे तरीके से लिखा है इज रियली वेरी यू नो 
uh, very interesting uh, stories. So Shushti has been writing newspaper articles from the age of 13, and so far she has published 15 articles in national dailies and magazines. Her debut novel, Tamarind Egg, was published by Rupa Publications when she was 18, 18 years old. Uh, the book has a forward by none other than Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond jo hai, is a very famous uh, literary figure. Uh, Ruskin Bond ji isko, uska forward diya hua hai, and was launched by the governor of Punjab in January 2019. Book reading events were held in Nagpur and at Harvard University. High school education ke baare mein, Sushti has done her schooling from Delhi Public School, R.K. Puram, New Delhi. She was awarded a gold medal by the school for academic excellence for seven consecutive years. She was president of the English Editorial Club, captain of the girls cricket team. Oh, wow. Girls cricket team ki bhi captain rahi hai, DPS mein, uh, R.K. Puram, New Delhi mein. And was also part of student council. She has a grade five certificate in plectrum guitar by Trinity College London, my goodness. Trinity, Trinity College jo hai London ka wahan se unko certi, grade 5 ka certificate bhi mila hai. So we have really a uh, very talented, very multifaceted personality today in the name of Miss Rusty Dhoke. So really is very, uh, you know, uh, very encouraging your, your works, your, your contribution in the different fields, not only, uh, not only study academic. Uh, you are you were captain of your team guitar guitar ke bare mein bhi aapko interest hai usme acche apne certificates liye hai my goodness aur ye tamarind ek karke jo aapka novel hai to is best selling one of the best selling novels in uh, you know in the in the market aur uh, parents ke bare mein bataye srishti ke jo parents hai dono they are highly educated do both are phd's uh, uh, father, Mr. Uh, Dr. Rajendra Dhoke is an I IPS officer and mother, uh, she was, earlier she was teaching in a college, but now she is a homemaker. So, itna, aur, jo, yaar, important thing you want to share karna chahte hai, ki, uh, Shusti jo hai, jo basically she is belong to a small, a small village, it's not town also, a small village in Nagpur district of Maharashtra. So let us welcome uh, Susti to this program, and we hope that this session will be very interesting, very informative, and very interactive also. इसके बाद एक हम एक करेंगे जब सुष्टि का जब अपना जब उनका लेक्चर हो जाएगा on foreign education preparations और उसके बाद में क्या-क्या preparation में हमको करना है वो उसके बाद में then then you can ask your questions to सुष्टि हम हम उनको आ, उनको इंटरेक्ट इंटरेक्शन के लिए कहेंगे आप आप लोग एक ध्यान में रखिएगा आप लोग एक तो क्वेश्चन चैट बॉक्स में डालिए नहीं तो नहीं तो आप यू यू कैन रेज योर हैंड ओके सो वी 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 डोंट वांट टू वेस्ट आवर टाइम और रिपीट मत कीजिए वंस इट इज आंसर्ड देन देन उसके बारे में रिपीट मत कीजिएगा और क्वेश्चन शुड बी वेरी ब्रीफ वेरी शॉर्ट ओके सो so now uh, uh, everything is set now. Now I hand over the program to Ms. Susti Doke with a round of applause. Susti, now over to you, please. Thank you so much. That was a very grand introduction. <laughs> um, so I would like to thank, um, first of all, the moderator, Mr. Somkur, um, and also the coordinators, Mr. Kargankar and Mr. Desh Pandey, for organizing this. Um, there's like 300 people here, so it's kind of overwhelming. Um, but it's so it's so nice to see that so many people are looking to go abroad. Um, and I'm happy to share whatever I've learned over the past few years. So let me start with how I was first introduced to foreign admission, um, or like foreign universities. Um, so when I was in school, um, I went to uk we went on like a family trip um and then we went to um cambridge university and there was like and i was i was just like 12 um but there was this like huge campus and big buildings huge libraries 
there was a river going through the campus and it was just so like beautiful the, like the culture was so vibrant and everything was so nice so that like somewhere that kind of stuck with me um and then a few years later we went to the us um where um where we went to we went to mm-hmm. colombia um and so when we went to colombia there's a bust of dr ambedkar in the library and it's a huge library and it was like it was so nice to see that there um so that was pretty inspiring too and you know how he like went to broad went to colombia studied so much so um that i think that um that has been one of the main inspirations um and so when the time came i thought you know why not because um i feel like i mean india's great but um i don't know if anything can um top that like the us um oh sorry can you not hear me no it's okay go ahead yeah it's okay yeah you are lo- loud and clear there is no issue okay um all right so i'm going to start with what it takes to go abroad like what exams you have to do um like what they look for um so let me start with the exams um there's a few like four or five exams that you'll have to take um there's one called sat which is scholastic ability test or you can also um do act which is american college test so out of both of these you can choose which one um you prefer and so uh, so that's the first one and then the second one is the subject test so subject test is actually um which one do you prefer i actually prefer the sat so sat um i think it's a little harder but it gives you a little more time but act is a little simpler is what i've heard act is a little simpler but um you have a bit of a time crunch so it depends on what you're good with um and then so there's sat there's subject tests which is um like subject tests you choose there are multiple subjects that you can choose from that are available and then you choose um like a couple from them usually people do two subject tests so i did math and physics um but you can also do three which is also i think recommended um in some universities um so there's that um and then there's also um toefl at toefl is um the test test of english as a foreign language so they want to make sure if you're international if you're an international student um that you you're fluent in english or you can speak english so it'll be easy for you to learn that um so so that there's that and then toefl ke saath saath matlab um us mein usually toefl chalta hai lekin um, agar aapko us nahi jana kahi aur jana hai to i um kafi universities kafi countries mein ielts karke exam hota hai to um wo bhi de sakte hain matlab interchangeable hai that's also an english exam so ielts is um international english language testing system so um that lets them know that you can speak english um and then agar agar us mein jana hai to um there's um um also an uh, exam called ap which is advanced placement which is optional um but if you go to the us um wahan pe credit system hota hai um to credit system mein um agar aap ap karte ho advanced placement it will give you some credits before you go to college so that you can skip those those classes or those credits 
um, and you can like skip ahead and maybe finish college early to save money or whatever. Um, and then, um, and also well, AP, AP classes, uh, AP exam will help you um, get credits, but also if you are in IB, which is international board, um, so international board also gives you some credits and you can also use those credits in, um, in college if you are, um, if you're like taking the same classes or the same like subject and it can be transferred, so that can happen. Um, colleges look for, most colleges look for um, a good, good academic record because it's usually, at least in the US, it's slightly hard for um, the, for international students to get in because they tend to um, lean towards citizens. Um, and so it's also, I think it's a little hard to um, get scholarships too for international students, but so your academic record needs to be very good um, and well, the, the application process for the US is a little more complex, what I thought, it will, a little more complex than, um, than other um, universities in other countries. And so the US looks for your grades from class nine onwards. So that's class nine, 10, 11, and then 12th half yearlies. Um, and your 12th predicted grades, basically, they go to the US. Um, to the universities. Um, and so that is very important. And um, especially if you want to get a scholarship, you will have to have academic record plus amazing extracurriculars and um, leadership and things like that. Um, so to show leadership, um, you can, um, like they'll ask you in the application, are you a president of a club in school? Um, or are you part of the student council, the student government? Are you the head girl? Are you the head boy? Um, are, you like a, are you a captain of a sports club? Or are you um, a national level player? Or do you have any publications? Um, have you done any research? Things like that. Um, and they also really value community service. Um, so that's really helpful. I think there's, um, for the US, there's like separate explicit questions. They'll, they'll ask you uh, in a separate question, have you done any community service? And so you, you want to have something to write in that um, answer. Um, and um, for the US or like in general too, it's good to have at least eight to 10 activities that you can probably say that I've done um, because um, in the application for the US, um, well, I'm, I'm, I can talk about the US because that's where I've gone and that's where I applied. Um, so they, they look for their space for eight to 10 activities for you to fill out for what your role was in that activity um, it, and they're looking for more than just participation. They're looking for initiative. Did you, did you play an important role in the event that was happening? Um, and again, and then they also look for work experience. Um, so they'll ask you, there's a question that asks you, um, what have you, do you have any work experience? And there's another that asks you, what have you done in the past two summers? when you apply, like when you're in 12th, they'll ask you what you did in 10th and 11th or 12th and 11th. Um, and so um, you basically what they're trying to say is even if you don't have, if you haven't worked both summers, they want to see if you're using your time properly, if you're being productive. Um, do you have, did you start a project of your own? Like there's so much happening with COVID. Did you help out around your community with COVID? Did you take initiative? Um, things like that. Um, so when colleges look at your application, they basically want to see if you have potential 
for growing even more than you have at home. And so they want to see that you have the potential to grow and that you are seeking growth. And it's not just enough to say that, you have to have um, activities to support that as evidence to like prove to them that, yeah, I am actually um, looking to grow. Um, they also look, um, this wasn't there when I applied, but my brother's applying now. And so um, there's this other question that says, have you done any online courses? Um, so, which I mean, uh, a lot of people might um, not be into online courses, but it's good to have um, some knowledge outside of um, school. I know school can be very engaging. Um, but again, ju just to show that you're actually intellectually like interested in issues of the world. Um, um, yeah, so they would like to see some online courses. There's like multiple websites where you can go. There's Coursera, um, there's edX, um, there's Philanthropy University. Anything works. Um, Excuse me, uh, Shristi. Now yeah. you can you can share your PPT. Yeah, yeah. I can if, share. You, if you wish, yeah. I have made you a host. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that's my email. Just okay. Okay. Mm, yeah, okay. Um Um right. So work experience, they'll ask you how you spent your last two summers. Um, and they'll also ask you if you have, like to show initiative, if you have your own project of any sort, like do you have a startup or did you um, raise money yourself and donate it to like charity? Um, like for example, I, the thing that I was working on independently was um, my book. So, um, just to show that you, you, um, you're into doing things outside of what, just what you should be doing. Um, other things to consider, writing skills, that is super important because um, not just for the US, everywhere people, um, the universities are going to ask you to write essays, statements of purpose, um, things like that, or like answers to questions. Um, and so, um, so it's very important to have those skills to write so many essays and like about 700 words is I think the maximum or a thousand words possibly. Um, so when I was applying, there was, um, I, I applied to about 16 universities, um, which is very common, um, especially for the US or if you're in general, just looking to go abroad. Um, so out of the 16, usually people apply to more than 10. That's like the minimum, 10 is the minimum. Um, and so if, so every university, there's, there's a common application that goes to all universities. And then every university has their own set of questions that you'll have to answer for like each university. And so those questions are basically essays too. Um, and so that's where a lot of the detail comes in about um, what kind of a person you are basically. Um, and so when I was uh, applying, I had to write about 50 to 60 essays, um, which you can, you can always reuse material because there's only so much to write. But um, yeah, so you really require good writing skills and you need to have the patience and you really need to want to go out to study because otherwise it's it's very like if you if you're not genuinely passionate about going abroad um, it's very easy to say chalo choro abhi India mein reh lenge or something something like that um, 
Um, right. Um, so that's writing skills. Um, then online courses I talked about. Uh, if you can do a minimum of one, but I mean, the more the merrier. Um, letters of recommendation. Um, so uh, universities, not just in the US, but again, um, in other places, um, they do require you to have letters of recommendation, um, which is basically, it can be teachers in your school or depending on the university, it can be like someone you've um, worked with, your employer, or um, someone like your supervisor from your internship or things like that. Um, so they'll basically write what, um, like what they think about you, what kind of a person you are, what kind of work ethic you have, things like that. Um, and um, so it's very important for you to have, to maintain a good relationship and a good impression um, with teachers and anyone else that you might be thinking. Um, all right, so letters of recommendation, you need at least two teachers. And I think uh, the new rule is that you also need your school counselor to send you a letter of recommendation. So um, it might be helpful to, like, I know some schools, at least my school was humongous. And so it was really hard to um, hard for the counselor to know everybody and the teachers to know everybody. Um, and so, but I mean, um, it's still worthwhile to um, to be in touch or just like, if you see the counselor going by, just say, hi, ma'am, how are you? Good morning, things like that. And also have a good impression with teachers and not necessarily academic teachers. It can also be like, I took a letter of recommendation from um, my uh, cricket coach. So that also works. Um, and so, and when you're choosing people to, um, for you, when you're selecting people to who you think will give you a good recommendation, um, think about what, who knows you best and, um, what you're good at. So they can vouch for you being good at something. Um, like cricket, I may not have been the best player, but but uh, I'm sure he wrote good things because um, I was I was like, I was captain of the first cricket team that my school ever had. I showed initiative, he saw something in me, so he made me captain. So I know that he must have good things to say about me. So um, that's how you choose who um, you want as your recommender. Um, and then another thing is, it's very important to have all the deadlines in mind because there's a lot. If you're applying to a lot of places, it can get a little overwhelming. And so it's important to be very organized, um, possibly make a table with all the universities, all the deadlines, um, Different universities have different deadlines for a scholarship too. Like if you want a scholarship, you'll have to apply possibly sooner than other people have to apply. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, so that's what it needs to take to go abroad. Um, of course, if there's anything I left out, feel free to ask in the question answers. Um, so I'm going to tell you what life over there is like. Um, so of course, it's no question that there's um, lots of infrastructure, big buildings, big libraries, like gymnasiums, huge campus. Um, so um, some of you must have heard about Stanford University. Um, so it's, uh, I mean, I don't know what they do with such a huge campus, but Stanford University, it has a campus of over 8,000 acres, which is a lot of acres. Um, so, basically, so they basically live life king size. Um, apart from that, there's also several, several hundreds of student organizations. Um, like at BU, at Boston University, uh, there's 
over 450 student organizations, if I'm not wrong. So there's something for everybody, um, whatever your interests are. There's also things like, um, well, I mean, there's like academic organizations, um, like there's, there's organizations for economics, biology, and things like that. But there's also fun clubs, like there's a board game club or a walking club. Um, it might, I mean, I'm sure that's not a deciding factor for you to choose between India and abroad. But it's, um, I mean, it contributes to the campus life, which is a very important part of um, education abroad. Um, talking about campus life, there's um, several celebrations since people from all over the world come to the university usually. Um, there's all kinds of celebrations and events and festivals going on all over campus. Um, like one of the most celebrated festivals at Boston University is Holi. Um, and then um, there's lots of pujas and things that happen to Garba. Um, so that's fun. Um, a lot of people are very concerned about food. Um, and so since again, um, a lot of people from all over the world come to, to um, these universities, they'll have, if their campus is big, they'll have multiple dining halls with multiple, like different kinds of cuisine. Um, and you'll, you'll be fine, you'll be able to find something for yourself. Um, and so the next thing I'm gonna come on to is what you will learn when you go abroad. Um, so like I mentioned, people from everywhere come to the university. So you get exposed. You actually have close friends from any country. Like I, my roommate was from Greece and I never thought I would ever meet somebody from Greece. And so what that did was um, it made me aware of what goes on in Greece. Like what is it like as a country apart from just a tourist destination? What are their issues? Um, so it gives you a global view of um, a global understanding of how the world works. And you also empathize with global issues um, like Black Lives Matter, for example. Um, it wouldn't have mattered um, as much if I hadn't have gone abroad. And it's such an important issue too, um, but it's hard to connect with it if you, um, if, if you're not like connected to it in any way, but I have very good friends who are black. And so um, it's, I mean, it's easier for me to um, empathize with them or like want to work towards making the world better for them. Um, so you learn about international issues. You'll also um, learn independence, of course. That's one of the most, like the major, Thing that you learn um, and I mean it's true that you can be independent later and not leave home and you know want to stay close to your parents and things like that but the sooner the better right so you the more independent you are I mean the more confident you are possibly the more opportunities you'll have um, and um, yeah um, and it might sound hard, but once you go there, one, once like within a week, you'll be fine. At least that's what that's most people are fine. Um, and the next thing is the quality of education, um, which is a big, big advantage um, because um, if you go through online courses, the online courses that I mean you should be taking, hopefully. Um, you'll see professors um, who are Nobel laureates, like, like they've been um, awarded a Nobel Prize in economics or things like that. They'll be, if they've been awarded a Nobel Prize in economics, they'll be teaching economics at the university. Like I'm taking one, I'm taking a course in financial markets by Robert Schiller. And um, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2013. And he teaches at Yale. And so you imagine having an interaction with an actual, um, having interaction, like asking questions, clearing your doubts, maybe like getting some inspiration from someone who has been awarded in their field of study at that level. Um, 
but even if your professor is not a Nobel laureate, um, you, I mean, they're still highly qualified. And um, most of them, a lot of them have studied from um, Ivy universities, like they've been to Harvard, they got their PhD from, um, I don't know, Princeton, things like that. Um, and it, they're also very um, approachable. They have set times for you to go um, and um, meet them, talk to them, um, ask your questions. If they see you around campus, they'll, they'll tell you hi. Um, you could sit at a coffee shop with them and have a conversation. Um, so it's very friendly and um, they're very approachable that way, which I think is very important for, to create a good learning environment. Um, right. Another thing that I um, at least saw a major change in myself was um, this comes from independence and um, you know being confident. It comes it, that's um, I saw a difference in how I communicate um, because. I mean, you have to eventually you have to take flights yourself. You have to like go to restaurants, um, ask them what you want. If there's, if something's not good, you need to tell them yourself. Your parents are not there to tell you or, or to tell them what's wrong or, um, so things like that. Um, even communication as in, um, even when you want something, um, from like your professor, you'll have to have the courage to go up or um, ask a question in class. And classes can be huge. They can, there can be like 300 people in one class. Um, and so you need to be confident enough to speak well, speak loud and clear, articulate well, um, and um, convey your point. Um, so that's a huge part too. Um, and the last major thing is they'll teach you how to dream big. Um, so usually there'll be like multiple TV screens all around campus or like flyers um, or even people, sorry, that was weird. Um, even, pe even people um, like standing around campus, um, like willing to talk to you, they'll have tables set up and they'll talk to you about um, their club or their organization or what they do. And uh, some of them can be really, um, I mean, really big and they help you make an impact. And um, at least at BU, I'm sure other universities um, have this too. They, um, BU has something called the Innovation Lab where anybody, if you have an idea for maybe a startup or, um, you have like, a, I don't know, um, or for a nonprofit, um, or even if you don't have an idea and you just want to do something and you want to bring a change to the world, um, they'll assist you with everything from step one, from figuring out what you really want to do. If, um, if what you want to do needs to be done, like if there is even a problem or are you just doing what you feel you should be doing. And they'll walk you through everything from raising funds um, to publicizing to everything. Um, so that kind of handholding is there, um, which is also, again, a huge, huge advantage. Um, and I think dreaming big also comes along with, um, I mean, it can, comes along with having so many people, having such a huge campus, um, and someone around you is bound to be doing something big um, or dreaming to do something big. And so that kind of a peer group is, um, I think is very important to push yourself um, to go forward um, because all of them have also been selected, have been through rigorous, um, you know, um, selection processes and has made it there. And a lot of them will have scholarships and, um, you know, um, which means that they're like even brighter. Um, and so that kind of peer group really helps to, um, you know, boost yourself in your dreams.
Um, so I think that's all I had to share, but I would be very happy to take questions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now you can you can revert on this host. No, up. Mujhe host kar dijiye. So. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Srusti. Uh, okay. There are uh, there are uh, so many questions on the, on the foreign education. So you can take uh, one by one. Uh, okay. In the chat box. Sure. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, um, there's one from Danny. What are your management tips for broad range of activities? Um, and how do you have time for this? Um, so I think um, one tactic that I used was I had this like huge whiteboard at my place. And um, even if you write on, on a piece of paper, make a schedule for yourself. Um, write down what day, what time you're doing what and stick to it. So if you said that I, um, I'm going to study from 12 to 2 till lunch and then after lunch I'm going to do the other subject and then I have a class and then I'm going to write my book. And so um, you need to have um, an, a set plan and then possibly if, if, if possible um, plan not just for today but for um, like maybe the next month, I don't know, or the next week. So you, um, by the end of the week, you're happy with the amount of work that you did. Um, could you please give suggestions of how or what to do in India for community service? Um, for community service, well, um, there's, um, I mean, there's organizations, I think the Red Cross and things like that, um, that you can volunteer with. You could volunteer at any NGO that also works. Um, or you can, um, there's crowdfunding um, websites online um, where I think Keto and things like that. So you can raise funds for maybe people affected by COVID um, or for an NGO and um, you can donate, so that also counts as community service. Um, how will the pandemic affect the admission process? Um, so I've been hearing that um, the universities are really lo losing out on a lot of money. Um, and so they might be a little tight with giving money at least this year. Um, I'm not sure, they haven't said anything, but that's just, what I think. Um, also, a lot of international students, even um, citizens, they want to not start college online or um, in the middle of a pandemic. And so um, once they get accepted, it, it, either they won't accept um, their offer or they'll, de or they'll defer it. So instead of joining in September, they'll join in January, February. Um, and so, I mean, that might affect how people are selected. Um, yeah. What should the minimum score in grade 12 be? I don't think there's a minimum score. Um, like even, so they look at you from class nine onwards. And um, even if you didn't do very well in class nine, if you showed improvement in class 10, so they see that you're capable of improvement and you want to improve yourself. So that also works. Um, and um, like, for example, if you're a national level sports player, 
you're not expected to have like 97% and also be you know that level of a player and so i think um, they look the point is to look at you as a as a person as a as a whole um and so just like one aspect of your application doesn't matter um it has to be your um overall like what kind of a person you are and what you contribute to their campus and will you do well in life um you know in the future if they see potential in you so that's what you have to show to them um where should i take classes to prepare for sat or act um that's a good question a lot of people don't even take classes um there's books available from um college board princeton review um um some other places that are i mean they're available online um and um, you can look up how they're rated and if you do like a couple books i think that's good enough um and also make sure to take a lot of practice tests um and time yourself and um i mean don't uh, cut yourself some slack like be brutal with yourself like um oh, like don't be like oh i could have gotten this question um so let me just like let me just give myself the point be brutal because um that day on on the test day you do i mean if you get it wrong you get it wrong um there's no two ways about it um how do poor students manage their fees and other expenses in us um right so like i mentioned scholarships are always available um and there's not just um one scholarship per university there's different kinds of scholarships and so you can have a scholarship for music if you're very good in music um or there's academic scholarships too or um athletic scholarships um and then of course loans are always available um do you think indian education system is outdated than foreign education um so i think each has their own uh, their own advantages um and i mean you surely you can't learn what you learn in india abroad because in india you're like in the middle of everything that directly affects you um and so that can't be replaced by anything so i think it just depends on what uh, what you're looking for out of an education um can you please share the platform for online courses other than coursera um there's edx edx um there is also philanthropy university where you can do courses on community service even if you're not able to um, able to actually do community service because i mean it's a weird time over it is um in the way of everything but you can also you can still show that you're interested in serving the community um by doing courses such courses um on philanthropy university um i'm not sure what else but i'm i'm sure you'll be able to find things if you google something um what is the eligibility for the exams um so usually people take exams when they're in school um so class 11 onwards you can start taking the exams um and it takes about a month or two months possibly to prepare i mean it's better to be on the safer side and take two months um and it also helps um apart from the books that i mentioned it also helps to watch videos online like you could just go on youtube um and see um videos on like guidance on how to crack the acd sat um and they have some pretty good tips um
how to find best universities. Um, so, I mean, there's lots of options. Um, people, usually the criteria that different people have, they want to look at um, how expensive it is. They want to look at um, like what the weather will be like. Because, so Boston, it snows a lot in Boston and it goes up to like minus 15 degrees Celsius. And so it can, a lot of people don't like that. And so they prefer to go to California, which is relatively sunnier. Um, even though, like for example, if, you, if, if they get um, accepted into Harvard and they get it accepted into um, maybe Stanford, they, they might prefer to go to Stanford because it's more pleasant. Um, um, people um, also, some people don't like huge campuses um, because they feel like they might get lost in the crowd. Um, so that's another criteria that some people have. Um, I mean, yeah. Rishi is asking, uh, yeah. can you suggest some books to prepare for SAT and ACT? Um, I mean, so there's, um, there's books by Princeton Review. Um, there's books by College Board. College Board is the board that conducts the exam. And so it's, uh, I mean, it seems like a good idea to do their book. Um, and it also, um, well, I mean, those are the books that I'm aware of, at least for, uh, at least for um, ACT and SAT. Um, but for SAT 2, which is the subject tests, um, there's um, John Chung is very good for math, at least, um, from what I know. Um, and there's also a book called Barron's, um, B-A-R-R-O-N-S, um, which is also very, very good for subject tests. Um, or, or TOEFL, TOEFL is a, a relatively simple, simpler uh, exam um, and you might not even need to study for it, but if you feel like, um, I'm sure there's books available in that too. Um, and then another thing, another resource that's um, helpful is um, Khan Academy. Um, so that's K-H-A-N Academy. Um, and um, they have videos on everything and they have guidance on basically everything under the sun. So they also have very good um, tips for ACT and SAT. And they'll also teach you topics if you don't know topics. Um, is it necessary to take SAT subject tests? Um, some universities don't require it. I think a lot of universities don't require it, but you need to um, keep in mind that you have competition from across the world and they get a lot of applications. And so you need to find every chance to um, you know, make yourself shine. And so if there are other people taking subject tests, um, then you know how would you compare to them? Um, so, like even Ivy, Ivy universities, they say that they don't require subject tests, but I mean, it's an unsaid rule that you have to take subject tests. Um, usually people take two, but some people, um, like a lot of people who get accepted also take um, three. Um, so yeah, I think it is necessary to take subject tests. Um, Which, which country is best for business education or which university? Um, I mean, it's a huge world. Um, you might, I mean, it depends again on what you're looking for. Um, sitting in India, it feels like education is the only thing, like the course that is taught is the only thing that's important. Um, but 
I think it's a lot of other factors too, like I mentioned, the campus life or the peer group or the support, the kind of support that you're looking for from the university. And um, I think especially for business, um, there is, um, I think it's important to look at what kind of alumni the university has, because a lot of universities have ways to connect, connect current students with alumni. And so if somebody from your university, the university that you're looking at um, is like a billionaire, you might meet him at like an alumni party. And so you form that connection, you form that network. And so that's really valuable too. So um, you might want to look at that. Is it the case that the content you study abroad uh, you see being irrelevant? Example, economic political structure when you come back to India. Um, I don't think it's irrelevant. Um, like, I mean, there's, uh, there's courses. It's not all very focused on the US. I mean, um, for me, at least there's, there's courses that are like general that you can take, um, but there's a lot of courses definitely that are US specific, but they do teach you, um, like if I'm, do, if I'm taking a course in economics and they give me examples from the American economy, um, I mean, the concepts still apply to the Indian economy because I mean, there are economies um, and economics is the same everywhere. Like the principles are the same. Um, and I mean, if you do a little bit of reading, you'll get to know what happens in India, but this way you you get to know what's happening in like a major major country in the world how much time have i studied in boston um i've been there for two years now so i'm going to start my third year so I, i've come halfway and i have two more years to go um Is NCRT sufficient for SAT and ACT of class 12? It is. Um, Topic-wise, it's sufficient. I think it's more than sufficient. Um, you won't require all of that. Um, but SAT and ACT, they have English and math. And subject tests, of course, they have um, whatever subject you choose. Um, but they're different. It's a different kind of exam than CBSC. So you have to prepare accordingly. Um, especially for subject tests, they have, um, they have negative marking. And so you need to know which questions to leave and how to manage time um, and things like that. Um, but I think CBSC greatly helps. I, I mean, I'm from CBSC myself. I can't speak for other boards. Um, but CBSC greatly helps for sure. Um, but it, it's still worth looking at, um, you know, um, books or resources that are tailored to those exams. Yeah, so you tell something about the scholarships which are available for Indian students in foreign universities. There are so many questions regarding this and how how the poor people from from particularly from, you know, uh, lowest strata of the community, they can they can aspire for for an education. This is also a relevant question. Yeah. Um, if you have, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so in um, universities, when they're up, when they're looking to give you scholarships, they're basically giving away money, and so you need to really convince them that I am worth your money, and um, so you can do that by um, you know being a very strong applicant. Um, there is, um, I mean, I mentioned. Um, 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 and, um, I mean, good, I have a good SAT score, um, have basically all, uh, standardized exams, have good scores in that, um, have a very strong academic, um, you know, record and have strong letters of recommendation because it, um, I mean, you can speak for yourself, but when others praise you, that you know seems like it's not just you, but other people around you are also happy by 
the kind of person you are um so i think basically just like having a strong application um yeah okay okay thank you uh, one uh, 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 one sambod is there she she would like to ask one question so i i'll unmute her first uh, sambod you can ask questions to uh, shrusti ji unmute yourself uh, first yeah yeah go ahead yes yeah go ahead beta um yeah ask your question um, my question is uh, which country is best for business education business education okay yeah right um i think for at least for um undergraduate studies um i think one of the best universities in the world for anything are the ivy leagues which is uh, princeton brown harvard there's eight ivy leagues um but i think i might be slightly biased towards the us cuz that's where i am but um so like i mentioned you you really need to look for if you're looking for business you'll need connections and you'll need a network um and if you um go to a um a university which has good um good people who've already you know been in that university and they've passed out and they've done something great in life they became huge huge business people um um so i think um that is something you can look at um i'm not sure which country um apart from the us um uh, but definitely there's no um after a point after you reach a certain level of universities there's no bad decision i mean you'll benefit everywhere um yeah i hope that helps okay uh mr rajendra khobra gade is there i'll i'll unmute him yeah mr rajendra khobra gade go ahead you ask for question directed to ma'am mr rajendra khobra gade yeah go ahead go ahead mr rajendra hello yeah go ahead uh shruti di i am sakshi actually this sakshi. is my first okay story. okay 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 uh, the i wanted to ask that uh, how do how to apply and where to apply for scholarship okay scholarship acha um are you looking at the us or are you looking at some other country the us like uh, this princeton boston harvard all these universities got it okay um so to apply to us there is an application called the common application um so if you if you google common application it should give you the website and so you need to make um an account and then um it will give you like a proper it will give you um an option to select what universities you want to go to you select those and then you get information on all the universities or whatever whatever universities you've selected and the information will consist of um deadlines different deadlines um there's um i think there should be a separate deadline for scholarships too but if it's not um written in that information um you can go you can go through um the questions of the university and you can see if there's if there's a space for um for a, a question about like uh, about scholarships like do you want scholarship yes or no and then um like somewhere around that question that it should be written or could be written by what date you have to um put your application in like submit your application by and um a lot of times if you want a scholarship or um if you want to qualify for a scholarship they ask you to apply a little sooner than the regular deadline um so that's i mean yeah it will be helpful to make a table of all the deadlines and you can keep a track yeah thank you uh man even mannat is there yeah mannat go ahead you ask your question thank you sir yeah uh, go ahead shrishti ji uh, you told us about the sat and act exams uh, i wanted to know if these exams also gets us into design colleges as well um um again i 
I think different uh, universities have different requirements. You might have to go onto their website and do some research and see what they look for in students. But I think, um, I think, what what colleges are you looking at? Yeah, and I'm looking at oh, yeah. Grad Institute and Art Center of Art Center. Okay, I'm not. I mean, I'm not really aware, but. Um, I think uh, if you look on, if you look up their websites, you should be able to find something. Or if not, um, a lot of times, like if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a, there's like space for questions or contact us, or they have an email ID. So you can always send them an email and um, send in your questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Yash is there. Yeah, Yash, go ahead. Unmute yourself first, Yash. Yash, there are three, three Yash, so only Yash, no surname. Yeah, go ahead, Yash. Okay, no, he's not there, I think. Uh, Yash Gayakwad, Yash Gayakwad, unmute yourself. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Ma'am, uh, I'm in 12th standard studying right now, and uh, it is my dream to study in New York, so... Uh, I've, uh, I, I, I served the university like Bronix High School, New York, and I mailed them that uh, I'm, I'm a student, I, I'm willing to uh, come to a university, but I have not, uh, I, I not got any reply. Okay, um, so what, is it, is it, okay you're in class. Well. Um, I mean, um, you, I mean, you can't, um, they usually don't reply to like questions. Um, I mean, I don't, I, they'll probably redirect you to the application, the common application, if that university takes the common app, um, or if they have, some universities also have their own application that's not under the common app. Um, so again, it, it's helpful to go through their um, website um, but otherwise, I think the common application, like like I mentioned, um, you go to the common application, make an account, and then apply through that. That should work. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one Dande. Dande. Yeah. You you go ahead with your question. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sir. yeah but Mama, I, I have a question first. about. Uh, yeah. Myself, Nunmai. Murmai, Murmai, okay. And my question is, uh, is it necessary to have seven to eight curricu extracurriculars? Um, it's not necessary. Like, it also, I think it also depends on the scale of your extracurriculars. Like, if you've been awarded, um, like, the first, if you have, like, rank one in some international Olympiad, that's, like, major. And so, um, instead of having multiple um just like participation i participated in this event things like that so that one achievement outweighs um a lot of other like minor achievements so it might it might be fine for you to uh, put that and just a few other things and be fine and not be uh, not have 10 activities but um i think um if you can manage um yes um yeah it shows that you like you have your hands full um so it's not required for sure but i mean it's always good to show the work you've done okay uh anybody then uh, anybody else uh, from uh, your, your this uh, yeah, you can pick one or two questions in from chat box hmm? okay. if you wish. Yeah. Anshuman Anand. Yeah, just a minute. Huh? Anshuman Anand is there. He's he's asking something. Yeah, just Anshuman Anand. Yeah, one minute. Anshuman. Anshuman Anand. Yes. Yeah. Unmute yourself. Mr. Anshuman Anand, yeah. 
Hi, uh, actually, my name is Ayushman Anand. Ayushman, okay, sorry, okay. Ayushman. It's, it's okay. Uh, my question is, is IGCSE uh, board is like more important for like foreign education or CBSE? CBSE? Um, I don't think there's anything like more important, less important. Um, they're just looking, if looking at um, your standardized test scores, um, which is why they're standardized because people come from all kinds of boards. So basically they want to see how your mind works and if it works well enough to score well in those tests. Um, so there, I mean, and whatever board you're coming from, as long as you do well and you have good recommendations, um, and you're involved in your school or possibly outside your, outside your school. I think that should be fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ayushman. <laughs> Acha, Harshada is there. Harshada Kamble. Yeah. Harshada, go ahead. Ask your question, Harshada. Hi, Shrishti. I'm Hi. Harshada Kamble. I actually have almost finished my graduation in design, fashion communication. I was looking forward to do my master's outside for better exposure. Mm -hmm. So I was curious about the SAT sub subjects. You said there's a subject exam. So will the subject vary according to my field or will they be like fixed subjects itself? Um, so all the exams that I talked about, I was going through the requirements for undergraduate application, but I think for graduate um, applications, the requirements might be different. Okay, got it. Okay. Also, could you streamline the must or like compulsory exams we have to give to go outside and the optional ones? Because I find it difficult when I research to understand what I actually have to give. You've stated a list of exams, but I'm not sure which ones are compulsory uh, specifically for postgraduate. Um, so I think for postgraduate, you still might need... Um, the test for um, like the TOEFL test, which is test of English as a foreign language, okay. um, just to prove that you need to speak English. Um, but other than that, I think GRE you'll have to give. Um, Could you elaborate? Um, GRE is, um, I mean, I think it's another standardized test, very similar to um, SAT and ACT. Um, um, I don't know too much about it. Um, but that, I mean, is that's what. Hello. The... Yeah, just wait, just wait, Shashank, just wait. Um. Yeah. So I think, um, GRE is the main exam to take. To, um, okay. Got it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh. Now Shashank and Chaitari. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So uh, I am the 11th grade studying in the AS and A level curriculum. Mm -hmm. So is there any uh, advantage for admissions or uh, when I study from that, I pass out from that board? Um, so there's no, um, the, it's not written anywhere that people have advantage, but I've heard of college counselors um, saying that, um, so A levels is like a Western education. Right, so um, the Cambridge board. Yeah, so um, I've heard of counselors saying that um, universities will be more willing to accept you because they already you have been exposed to Western education and you'll be you adjust easily. Um, but I mean that's what I've heard. It's just word of mouth. Uh, and also, I have a YouTube channel. So does that count? Like the activities and it, I mean, if you you can definitely mention it. Um, if you especially if you have like a lot of viewers and followers, um, or subscribers, so that also really helps. I mean, and a lot of universities, if you're uh, applying for music, or um, even if you're not applying for music, if you have something to show, um, um, you can always like add a file of maybe a recording of what you do um, and they will look at it. So, oh, okay. Or, and my last question about the cost. Cost. Uh, oh. um, so I think um, so universities, different universities have different costs, especially from around the globe. 
um, but a lot of universities are willing to give full scholarships also, and a lot of universities don't give scholarships. Some give like some percentage, twenty five percent scholarship. So I think it totally depends on you and how you manage it. Or it also um, this might be a deciding factor in what universities you choose, um, depending on the cost and how willing they are to give scholarships. Just could you give the average uh, number, like the average for the U.S. Yeah, U.S. I'm mostly looking for the U.S., but um, Canada is also an option. But uh, U.S. is the first preference. Okay, so on an average, I think it should be about sixty thousand per um per per annum. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, now uh, um, one, one, one or two questions, uh, Shristi. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you are okay, no? No yeah, issue. No. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, have some water in between, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, okay, Mr. Narayan. Well, yeah, Mr. Narayan, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, sorry, sorry, good afternoon, ma'am. First of all, I would like to say that this has been a wonderful presentation and it is going to help a lot of students out here. Secondly, ma'am, I had a couple of questions to go over. So, first question is, ma'am, uh, could you give us a deeper insight as to what community service aspect is that the colleges ask for? And the second question is, if I have been a part of a musical project, a band, for example, will it count as work experience? Um, so, to answer your second question first, if your if your band has um, performed at restaurants or you've had a concert. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure about concert, but if you've had an employer or if you were self-employed and you were earning money through it, I think that could count as work experience. Um, and um, community service, um, I'm, so this year especially, colleges are being a little, um, they're being understanding. I mean, there's a pandemic going on, people can't do as much as they could have. Um, but usually it's um, things like volunteering um, with NGOs or um, or even if not with NGOs, you could um, maybe like make some homemade things and like give to people. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, yeah. Uh, next is Trisha. Yeah, Trisha, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead with your question, Trisha. I um I would like to ask you about my chances if my, like I am interested in going for forensic psychology. So the uh, the um number of colleges which have the program for bachelor's degree is like so uh, little. So my chances, what are my chances to get into a uh, college? Okay. Yeah, Shristi. Are you there, Shristi? Shristi, are you there? Uh, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Unmute yourself. Yeah, unmute yourself. Okay. Okay, fine. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Um, sorry, could the question be repeated, please? Uh, just a minute. Uh, yeah, Trisha, go ahead. Ask once again your question. Yeah. Uh, so, I would like to ask you about my chances in getting into a college if my degree, uh, if my field of interest is in a limited amount of limited number of colleges so like what is what can one do about it um so if there are chances that if um if what you're looking for is available only in limited places then the number of people who are applying to that program might also be limited so it could be that um I mean, your competition might be less, you never know. Um, like at BU, um, the linguistics department has just like 40 students in total. And so um, 
I think you would have a slightly better chance at getting in. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ah. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, one one in, interesting question from the chat box. Uh, very okay. Congratulations okay. to organizers. Thank you so much. Uh, we are doing it for the for the benefit of our students and our parents also. So we are really thankful to Shusti for sparing her valuable time for this. Uh, Beta Shusti, how do you evaluate difference between higher education, job, business, living in USA? So that uh, in India, uh, USA and India, so that the boys girls can think of oh, okay the the difference between Indian education system and foreign education, the living standard is this is a very common question. Yeah, um, so um, I think um, staying in the staying in India gives you different um, like it teaches you different things than going abroad. Like in India, for example, in if you go to DU, um, there'll be like a lot of protests, a lot of political talk, um, which you might be interested in. Um, and so I think um, it depends on what you're looking to learn. Um, like if you want to be more independent and you want to, um, you know, get a worldview, get that kind of um, exposure. Um, so I think it definitely, I mean, that foreign education would be it for you. And um, living standards wise, of course, um, I mean, India will be like India and America will be like America. Correct. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. That, is, that is true. That is very true. India is India and America is America. That is okay. Uh, okay. Uh, with the, I think uh, now um, we have answered all the questions from the almost all the questions from the participants. Uh, I don't think there are the relevant questions. There are general in nature questions. Questions are unanswered, but they are in general nature. nature. Thanks. Uh, so. A PhD. What about PhD courses? So, uh, can you can you can you answer this? What about PhD courses, LLM, and further higher education? Um, I've heard that um, universities are more willing to give scholarships for PhD students, but I don't know too much about it. Yeah. Okay. No. No issue. No problem. Okay. We'll be we'll be conducting one more session regarding this. No. Uh, regarding higher courses. Uh, that uh, uh, post graduation, then PhDs yeah. will be conducting another program for this, and you you, you are welcome to join us this program. Okay, uh, okay. Now uh, now it's time to uh, time to say uh, uh, time to say our the heartfelt thanks to uh, Shushti ji. Shushti. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Shushti, we are really uh, very grateful to you because, you know, we know you are very busy, you know, uh, because classes are there. You are totally busy. Uh, that told me, you know, you are extremely busy. <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, sparing uh, time for this program, it was also very, very important. And you, Not an issue at you all. Are, I'm so happy to and, be here. And, and you were kind kind enough to spare your time for this program. We are from association side, All India SCST Employees Welfare Association, ONGC Mumbai. Uh, I really thankful to you. And uh, now, Jate Jate Hamare, Mr. Sunil Deshpande Ji, hai, Mr. Sunil Deshpande. Uh, he's, uh, he is our office bearer. Uh, so, uh, Sunil, are you there? Sunil Deshpande. Yeah. So, uh, Jate Jate, Aapko, what up? Thanks, Hamlok Dena Chate from our association oh, wow. side. And we wish you all the best for your bright career because you are really extraordinary genius, you know. Oh, oh my God. Thank you so much. At the age of 18, you, you, you wrote a novel. Yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> you start karte hai, padhai likhai, you have kitab likh di itne badi hai. Aur wo, <laughs> a publication ne published hai. Aur Russian bond ji ne usko forward diya. So really yeah. amazing. So you are interested in so Thank many you. Yeah. And your brother is also in UK. He's studying in, in uh, UK. In, yeah. In UK. So my best wishes to you, your brother, your family, everybody. Now, Sunil, so propose much. vote up. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, sir. 
and it was a very informative uh, uh, talk uh, uh, for taking admission in foreign universities it requires actually planning knowledge dealing in a right uh, thought process coordination and organization within itself in, but in spite of this fact actually uh, uh, that large number of persons knows that knows this but as i say theoretical knowledge and practical aspect from a person who has undergone with this process uh, uh, uh which is the today's topic uh, also of, of taking foreign education and admissions will always be a beneficial uh, uh, to the aspiring students uh, on behalf of our association or in the sast employers employees welfare association ongc mumbai branch uh, thanks shushri for accepting our invite and the tips given by you will definitely be going to helpful to all the aspiring aspiring students uh, uh, and the parents uh, my best wishes Uh, to you for all your success uh, in uh, future for your future endeavors uh, thank you very much uh, shrishti uh, thank you so much i also thanks to uh, jage sompur sir chairman of uh, our association all india scst employees welfare association ongc mumbai branch for taking uh, uh, the initiative by conducting webinars on webinar various subjects i also thanks to all the participants for this overwhelming response today uh, more than 400 plus yes. joined in zoom <laughs> and several others uh, were on the youtube platform youtube youtube platform yeah uh, the success of the webinar will be incomplete without uh, the participants uh, without uh, the participation of the participants uh, this encourages uh, the organizers also uh, so friends stay connected for further update on webinar being conducted uh, by Uh, all India SCST Employees Welfare Association ONGC Mumbai branch. Uh, thank you, one and all. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Now, अभी सबको मैंने अनमुट कर दिया है. जोरदार clap एक बार हो जाए सुष्टि की के लिए. जोरदार तालियां. Yes. Thank you. We wish you all the best, sister. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. It was very nice. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Very nice. It was very informative. Very informative. Everybody is so happy now. They are clapping. No, yeah, everybody yeah. is happy. Yeah. Thank you, NGC. Thank you. So take take care of yourself, everybody. Shruti. Okay. Thank you, man. Then bye bye. Bye bye. I'm going to close now. This thank thing. you, man. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.